Hello, cannabis researchers. Today I'd like to describe some recent work we've done with a measurement of THC in exhaled breath after marijuana smoking. We're exploring the potential of a transportable LC compact mass spectrometer system for, the, for on site uh, roadside testing as well as on site uh, conferences and major sports events, wherever there may be a large gathering of people and then with an interest uh, by the authorities to monitor the breath of the, some of these individuals. We should all be familiar in the recent wake of the pandemic of the importance of our breath. If you breathe or uh, exhale under the cold surface of a glass window pane in the wintertime, you'll see condensation. This photograph on the left shows the particles that have come from uh, a cough. And in the wake of the pandemic, we all know how important it has been to wear masks as we are near each other and uh, want to limiting, uh, limit the exposure of ourselves uh, to our potential COVID disease. And so the breath is, a, is another biological sample that can be used to monitor the uh, drugs and drug metabolites and constituents in our bodies. So why collect exhaled breath? Mainly because it's easy, it's non-invasive. Uh, people that are providing a sample do not like to have a syringe injected into their, their arm for intravenous collection of blood. Urine sample collection, of course, is, is possible but it can be problematic uh, with identifying the, the individual uh, who provides the uh, urine that is actually, for the urine is actually from the individual. And breath analysis, if it can be made to be easy and effective uh, is an alternative that we're going to explore its potential in this work that I'm describing today. So exhale, exhaled breath is a rich in source of information. It's known that it has been reported in 2011 in a review that there's over 3,500 compounds identified in breath. Urine, of course, has thousands of chemicals in it, endogenous chemicals, as well as uh, the drugs and their metabolites. And blood analysis, of course, and plasma analysis has been used a long time to uh, monitor the uh, PK distribution of drugs and metabolites and so forth. The breath contains volatiles, of course, ethanol and nitric oxide in the gas phase. Breathalyzers have been used for some time for roadside testing uh, for drunk, drunk driving, but there are also non volatiles in the breath. Breath has aerosol particles. I might add that the matrix, matrix components in the breath are much fewer and much simpler than those in urine or plasmas. Plasma. So from the analytical standpoint of, of drug testing, uh, breath is a simpler matrix to deal with interferences. So there have been publications, of course, so the first publication that drug testing can be done using exhaled breath as a specimen was done in 2010. Amphetamines could be detected in exhaled, exhaled breath from drug addicts and reported to be a new possible method for drugs of abuse uh, and testing. And so this demonstrated that drug intake can be detected in breath after sampling on a filter and LC MSMS analysis. I might add this work was done with a first generation uh, breath collection device. And the one I'll be describing here is a newer second generation improved device for collection of, of breath. Another report about five years later was a report on the pharmacokinetics of tramadol and its old uh, demethyl metabolite in exhaled breath compared to plasma and oral fluid after a single oral dose. Of course, the oral fluid is another simple biological sample to collect. There's a lot of current interest in oral fluid analysis. So breath and oral fluid may can be perhaps complementary. And then this report shows that the breath was complementary to prior experience of blood and urine. And so there's a good reason to consider breath as a, another simple biological sample to collect to monitor the uh, presence of drugs and their metabolites in the, in the body. So this new device is shown here. It's a simple, small device that has an outlet and an inlet. This, the, pay, the person providing the exhale sample removes the inlet and the outlet and places the larger opening into their mouth and exhales slowly about 10 times, slowly <clears throat> into this device. Inside the device in this cutaway, you can see there are three collectors. These are uh, kind of a torturous pathway for the breath to go through lots of surface areas where the particles are collected on the, the collector inside. It's important to notice that there are three collectors inside, which means that one, 
one sample is split into three different samples, an A sample, a B sample, and a C sample. And for forensic drug testing, uh, that's very handy because a screening test can be done on the first one. And if that's turned out to be a presumptive positive, then the sample can be analyzed again by a central laboratory and even a third reference laboratory if necessary. And so this device is very convenient in having these three collectors that have the same uh, sample in each one of them. And so the device is shown here uh, when you remove the, the upper portion, you see the collectors and these can be dis dispensed or pushed out very easily uh, to into a vial and extracted. So the condensate from the breath is inside the collector. It is pushed into a vial or it will be extracted with a solvent and it's the work that I'll just be describing was done with ethanol, absolute ethanol. And then that extract can be uh, analyzed by LCMS uh, as I will just show later. Roadside testing has some precedence. So the law enforcement in some major cities have mobile laboratories. Uh, they've had a, had GCMS and to a lesser extent LCMS, but there's a growing interest in LCMS if it can be shown to be robust and reliable and not take a long time. Some years ago, we took uh, the Avion mass spectrometer into a nearby field of hemp and did on-site uh, testing of the hemp plant, the uh, trichomes on the surfaces of the flowers and the leaves for the presence of CBD and the terpenes and other things. This was not LCMS, but rather uh, an ambient ionization technique. So certainly mass spectrometers, and if they're simple enough, uh, can be taken into the field on a mobile laboratory. And that's the concept we're suggesting here. Roadside or on-site drug testing. Uh, many breathalyzer, breathalyzer devices lack selectivity. And uh, the challenges are that the turnaround time, the analysis time must be short. The analytical results must be accurate. Uh, the robotics would be very helpful for efficiency and reproducibility. The robots do the same thing over and over again. Sometimes people change and there's some less reproducible. And certainly it will be important to not have um, false positives and false negatives. We want to have a bit selective and sensitive detector, which a mass spectrometer can be or is, to make sure we don't um, report inaccurate results. The potential benefits from such a system would be LCMS sensitivity and selectivity are far better than color tests or fluorescence or UV detection. It goes without saying that a, if a fluorescence, detect, fluorescence detector is used, but uh, the analyte has no fluorophore in it, you don't see it. Same for UV detection. If it doesn't have a chromophore, you don't see it. So LCCMS screening tool with high analytical performance would be very desirable. And the, of course, it provides presumptive positives, which can be confirmed by an LCMS MS laboratory later. Extraction of the breath collector was reported in 2020. We reported the, 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 uh, this device using um, a larger extraction volume. So the same device, breath collection was done. The collector was pushed into a test tube, a conical test tube, and then one milliliter of methanol was added to do the extraction. After the extraction, the collector was removed. The, the, the excess solvent was removed over an hour's time period by vacuum centrifugation. And that step of taking an hour or more to concentrate the dryness and then reconstitution for LCMS analysis made that impractical for roadside or on-site testing. So the purpose of this work was to do a micro extraction with a much smaller volume of uh, solvent so that the blowout or concentration of dryness was not necessary and could be a shorter technique, which we'll show you it certainly can be. And so an improved sample preparation is reported in this um, report, meaning faster micro extraction of the breath collectors. This is just a blue dye and, and 50 microliters of ethanol to show how it can be concentrated in the bottom of an auto sampler vial that has this capability. The breath collector is extracted with only 50 microliters of absolute ethanol containing 500 picograms of D3 THC as an, in, as an internal standard. This and this approach removes the need to evaporate the extra uh, solvent and therefore make a much shorter uh, preparation, sample preparation time. The sample preparation procedure is shown here where the, the added breath collector to a vial after the sample is collected. This uh, breath collector is displaced very easily from the device into an auto sampler vial that just nicely contains it. 
and that it's within that autosample valve that the extraction will take place. This is once the solvent has been added, which contains the internal standard, then the, the extraction is done on a vortex mixer. And this is an example showing some of that blue dye just to show how easily and extensively it is, it is uh, circulated through the collector. And it was also observed that the collector actually rotates within the vial, giving lots of uh, extraction exposure of just this small volume of 50 microliters. And of course, the whole again, the whole reason for 50 microliters is to, to directly inject that extract, not have to blow it down. So after that is, is done, the vortex mixing, the centrifugation is done, the re re collector is removed from the vial, and the, at the bottom of the vial now is the uh, extract, again shown here in blue just so you could easily see it, the, the actual extract in the absence of the blue, well, it's difficult to see it. it, it and I did, this is done simply to make it easier to see what the 40 or 50 microliters looks like. And this micro extract solution now is in the micro auto sampler vial for immediate LC compact mass spectrometry analysis by selected ion monitoring LCMS. So experimental for these experiments are summarized here. The HPLC system is an Advion Avant UHPLC system, 2.1 millimeter column. 150 millimeters. It's 1.8 microns. This is a Restec Raptor column. These are very nice columns for this application. The flow rate is 0.7 mils per minute. It's an isocratic separation. The purpose of that is to avoid not having to do a recycle of the gradient, which takes time. The uh, high percentage of the C nitrile on a C18 column is uh, unnecessary because these are very lipophilic molecules and you need the organic solvent to elute them. The total run time for LCMS was five minutes, uh, so that uh, you can have 12 samples an hour run with, with this uh, approach. The mass spectrometer is the Advion CMS compact mass spectrometer. It was operated on a positive ion APCI mode, atmospheric pressure chemicalization. We monitored by selected ion monitoring the D0THC at three mass to charge 315.3, as well as the protonated D3THC at 318.3. Selected ion monitoring on a single quadrupole mass spectrometer. The, here are the results of um, the APCI selected ion monitoring LCMS analysis of a volunteer marijuana smoker, the zero hour. We asked the volunteers to take a breath sample before they started smoking. In that case, there should be no THC in their breath. This result shows that. What about these two abundant uh, chromatographic peaks here? These are endogenous components common to human breath. They are well separated, obviously, and do not interfere at all with this. Um, with this retention time for THC. The zero hour trace also contains the D3THC because remember we had 500 picograms per collector of that internal standard. We also see that by monitoring 318.3 there are three other chemical constituents in the breath that, that uh, are present but they do not interfere at the retention time under these LC conditions for a D3THC. So this is the LCMS results for the blank. The blank contains the internal standard, but not the THC. The double blank, which contains neither of the target analytes, also showed uh, no evidence of interference, chemical interference, at the retention time of 2.6, so one re minutes retention time. Here then is a summary of one of the volunteer results. First of all, the calibration curve has is two nines. And uh, we have the calibration standards in blue, the blue dots from 50 picograms uh, on up to 50,000 picograms. The chromatographic integrity of these compounds, I'd like you to note, we can get to do, achieve very good quantitative analysis because the signal to noise is, is very good. The chromatographic integrity is good. As we move to a higher level, the 10,000 picogram or 10 nanogram per collector sample shown here has a very strong peak. This, of course, is an endogenous breath component in this sample. And finally, at 50,000, the upper limit of quantitation, clearly it's a very, very strong signal. So any of these signals in between, uh, as we'll see in the next slide, each have very good signals to noise ratio and chromatographic integrity. The next slide then focuses on those positives. The one volunteer, this is one volunteer, so smoke uh, contents, uh, breath contents after a half hour through two hours on out to six hours. We collected samples uh, in between some of those areas but out as far as six hours. And again, the zero hour for unknown C 
bung to a seat. Uh, zero hour meetings, they collected their breath before they started smoking, and certainly we see there's no evidence for THC at uh, that level. At uh, six hours, we see a, a weaker peak here. If we go all the way out to a half hour where the level is highest, we see that in the half hour level, we've got a very high level, very strong signal in the presence, but no, no interference of these two endogenous components. And so each of these peaks at 2.61 minutes uh, represent THC, and that gives the quantitative characterization as well as the area under these peaks gives the quantitative information. So we can do reliable, selective, and accurate quantitation by selected eye monitoring LCMS. This slide shows the disappearance curve uh, of THC in the smokers. In zero hour, of course, we detected no THC prior to smoking. The, uh, after just a half hour, 30 minutes, the level in the, this subject's breath jumped way up here to almost 45,000 um, picograms per collector. And over the period of six hours, it gently went down. And this is consistent with what the literature shows. I might add that these levels are higher than often we see in the literature. You know, many of the examples in the literature suggest uh, the highest level being a neighborhood of um, uh, a nanogram per, per collector. Uh, but in this case, we, we have a volunteer who uh, perhaps smokes uh, more regularly and has higher levels. The summary of the, of the levels are shown here at a half hour was 43,000 picograms per collector, and at six hours, it dropped down to 6,700 picograms per collector. The next steps would be to use a robot to do the sample preparation. That was not done in this work. This all sample preparation was done by hand in the laboratory. It's fairly simple and straightforward, but in the laboratory of, of a mobile laboratory, it would be very handy to have a robot. Such a robot does exist. We did not have one and did not use it, but it does exist. It has been around for several years from the company in Sweden called Breath Explorer. They have a sample preparation system for these breath collection devices. It caps it, it reads the barcode, it does everything that needs to be done for sample preparation. And so if that was to be combined in a mobile laboratory with the Advion mass spectrometer LCMS system, there is the HPLC system, there is the compact mass spectrometer, that could be a working system in a mobile laboratory that could in principle provide less than 10 minute uh, sample analysis, preparation and analysis for on-site screening for THC in the breath of marijuana smokers. So the summary on the analysis time, in summary, the whole thing was done in less than 10 minutes. The breakdown of that 10 minutes is shown here. Robotic handling of the device, reading the identity of sample, opening the breath collection device, transferring the collector to a label vial. That can be done, has been done, but not in this work with that robot, and that's done in 30 seconds. The next step is addition of 50 microliters of ethanol containing D3 THC internal standard. That only takes 30 seconds or half a minute. Extraction by vortex mixing takes about a, about a minute. Simplification can be done in one to two minutes. Opening the vial and collector removal is very short also, of course. And then finally, the longest step is the LCMS analysis time, but that entire run is done in five minutes with a retention time of 2.61 minutes in these results shown here. So the summary, a compact, transportable, atmospheric pressure ionization, single quadrupole mass spectrometer can screen for presumptive positives by TH of THC by selected ionizer from LCMS in the collected breath of marijuana smokers in less than 10 minutes. If a threshold for THC is set, for example, a 50 picogram per collector and a 50 picogram per collector level of D3 THC is used, a ratio greater than one could be considered a presumptive positive. If the level is less than point of 50 picograms per collector, then that would be a, a, a negative, if you will, not a positive, so presumptive positive. It's up, to, it's up to up to law enforcement to decide what that threshold is, and that has not been established as yet. Finally, because the described breath collection device has a B and C sample, uh, sample contained in it, a presumptive THC breath positive can be sent to a central laboratory for, for LC-MSMS confirmation using the B sample. If that finding is challenged, there's still a C sample that could be sent out to an additional reference laboratory. 
And so finally, I'd like to acknowledge the people who helped with this work. Ms. Um, Hannah Xiang from Advion helped us uh, find uh, or locate some volunteers to produce or provide a positive THC samples from the smoking of marijuana. My daughter also provided a, a couple of um, additional sample sets from uh, volunteers who uh, uh, had previously smoked uh, marijuana cigarette. And Dr. Robert Fortes of Advion is the programmer that wrote the very helpful and easy to use software, quantitative software in the Advion mass spectrometer data acquisition. And, and finally, Ms. Matilda Stembach from Breath Explorer and Monk's Blast Blast uh, was, provided several helpful radio videos and, uh, and guidance on using the equipment that's provided by Breath Explorer. So with that, I thank you very much for your attention. I'd be happy to answer any questions.